We're still waiting at this moment for any kind of official update on a hostage deal. So far today, we've had the leaders of Hamas, we've had the Israeli prime minister all saying it's close but not final. The deal reportedly involves some sort of pause in fighting, but as a potential announcement gets closer, Israeli forces are still engaging Hamas on the ground in Gaza. Live now from Jerusalem with Moore's correspondent uh, Sam Bednick. So, you know, as I said, Sam, we're still waiting on this deal. From your point of view, what's uh, what are the latest developments? There's a lot of anticipation right now as to a potential deal. People say that we could be hearing news within the next few hours. The war cabinet is meeting Tuesday night to discuss the deal. It will then go to the larger cabinet. Now, this deal can't go through unless the larger cabinet approves it. But uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that he feels it is close. He hopes to have some good news soon. Same with United States President Joe Biden. He did say that things were moving to be close to a deal, but neither of them have given specifics as to what that would look like. Now, while the, the specifics are a little bit murky, I spoke to a senior analyst with the International Crisis Group. She said that what it would look like would probably be 50 People from the Israeli side, women and children, would be released for a larger number of Palestinians. That number is not specified. And it would be in exchange for a larger cessation of fighting. It's likely that the hostages would be released in batches, several over a bunch of days. Now, she said that this could open the door to more dialogue, potentially, and maybe to finding another solution than fighting. However, by no means did she say that this is an end to the conflict. Both sides are very much dug in. Neither side wants to stop right now. Now, Israel, Qatar, and the United States have been working for weeks to try and come up with a larger hostage deal. They've come very close in some instances. In some instances, they come to almost the final step. But so far, nothing has come to fruition. So everyone is cautiously optimistic right now, but nothing yet has been uh, actually decided. All right. Those numbers uh, you're reporting pretty much in line with what we've heard from a number of different sources today, a number of around 50. Maybe you get a pause, whether it's three or four days. We don't know the details of any of this yet and won't know until it's officially announced. While we wait, Sam, we still have a war that uh, is happening inside of Gaza. Let's, for a moment, focus on the humanitarian side of that, which we haven't talked about as much today. What's the latest there as you know it? The humanitarian situation continues to get worse and worse, and that's because the fighting is escalating. On Tuesday, there were shelling and more airstrikes in northern Gaza. It's concentrating now on the Jabalia refugee camp. This is a very dense area with a lot of concrete buildings. Israel has said that since it pushed a lot of Hamas militants out of Gaza City, they are now regrouping in this refugee camp. But a lot of the fighting, as it has been in recent weeks, is centered around hospitals, meaning that hundreds of people are trapped inside these hospitals while there is fighting all around. Around them, and there are a lot of dwindling supplies. On Tuesday, the Al Awad hospital was hit. Three doctors were killed, including one who was at the hospital, a staff there, and two from the international aid agency, Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders said that a shell hit the third or fourth floor while its staff were inside, and they were killed. There is about 200 people in that hospital unable to get supplies to. Now, Israel had told people to move from the north of Gaza, where this heavy fighting is taking place, to the south of Gaza. However, it is now expanding its operations to the south of Gaza and striking cities and compounds there. People I've spoken to in the south say they have absolutely no idea where they're supposed to go to seek any sort of safety. The weather's getting colder outside. People are living in tents. They're on the muddy ground. They're cold. They lack food, fuel, medicine. And there's just a big concern that as the fighting continues, it's only going to get worse. Correspondent Sam Bednick live uh, tonight in Jerusalem. Um, thank you, Sam. Tough situation there. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.